Hello, my name is Neil Davidson and I'm the founder of Raw Amber Studios. Welcome to another online drawing session. This session mimics the structure of a regular life drawing class. We'll show you one or more photographs on the screen and it's your job to draw what you see. We'll have an artist joining us, giving hints and tips. You can either follow their advice or do your own thing. It's entirely up to you. You can watch this video again once it's finished and you can also download the reference photographs so you can carry on your work after the session. Lots of people watch these sessions twice. The first time round they just watch and then the second time round they watch and draw along. I hope you enjoy the session. Right, let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to this latest online portrait session. In this session I will be drawing a one hour pose and I want to focus on how to finish a drawing using edges. So I'm going to be talking a lot about shadow shapes and the edges of these shapes. And for this drawing I'll be using a combination of willow charcoal together with compressed charcoal, a blending tool of your choice. I like to use brushes but you can also use a stump or a piece of tissue for instance. And finally I like to use a grey putty rubber. And the reason for this is that it's very malleable. So very easy to change shape and become nice and precise for the details later on. Now the first thing I'm going to do is tone the paper. And for this I'm just using a piece of old willow charcoal. I'm just using the side of this to tone the whole of the paper down to a nice mid-tone. I could then use some tissue or kitchen roll to rub this into the paper to get rid of all of the texture there. Really just trying to make this into a nice even layer of charcoal. Now as you wipe this charcoal off it does tend to dissolve a little bit so I need to sometimes do a few layers and again the goal here is to get that mid-tone something that sits in between the dark of the charcoal and the white of the paper So if I make a little tonal scale or value scale to the bottom right here, you can see that I can easily erase into this using my putty rubber and I can work with three tones, the white of the putty rubber, the mid-tone of the paper and the darks of the willow charcoal. So now let's start with the portrait. And the first thing I always tend to do is work from the top and the bottom of the skull. And what I'm trying to do here is not use my pencil or charcoal as I would a writing tool. Instead, I try to hold it at the very end and use my whole arm to draw, locking my wrist essentially. And like this, I can make nice straight lines. So using my whole arm, I'm starting with the blocking, which basically means what it sounds like. It's a, an area of the drawing where I'm using blocks of tone and blocky lines. And the reason for this is again, if I start off with curves, it's very hard for me to copy that curve a few times in exactly the same style. And so it's less flexible and you can't move your lines as easily compared to straight lines. So this is always why I start with straight lines first, because as you can see, it's fairly easy to then move these around. So 
So using these straight lines, again I'm first blocking in the top and the bottom of the head, as well as the center line. And the center line is the line that goes all the way from the middle of the forehead, through the middle of the nose, down to the middle of the chin. And these are the basics of the portrait. And from here I can start using comparative measurements to start looking at the proportions of her face. For instance, in this case, I can see that the eye line sits roughly in the middle of the bottom of the chin to the top of the skull. And what I'm basically doing here is take my charcoal stick or not a stick and try to look for quarters, thirds or halves. For instance, when I measure on the photograph, I can see that the bottom of the chin to the bottom of the nose, bottom of the nose to the top of the brow, and top of the brow to top of the skull are all equal lengths. So this means I can divide my portrait into three equal thirds and place this on my paper. And that's basically what comparative measurement means. You're constantly comparing the measurements on the photograph and compare these to your drawing. And this can be vertical, like we just did, but also horizontal. For instance, I can compare one of these three thirds to the sides of the skull. And I can see on the photograph, the widest point is the cheekbones. And when I compare the cheekbones to the center line, I can see it's roughly the same as the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. So this style of measuring underlies everything I draw. And it's really useful whatever you're going to be drawing, even if it's a portrait or a landscape or whatever you want to be drawing or painting. Now again, I'm using straight lines to just connect these dots, trying to find a rough idea for the sides of the skull, as well as the fringe and the general flow of the hair. Now the general tendency here is to keep blocking in this way using lines. But what I actually find is more useful is using masses and shapes in terms of darks and lights. So instead of outlining everything I'm going to be drawing, instead I'm going to look at big triangles of dark and light. And the most obvious one for instance is sitting underneath the chin casting a nice triangular shadow on the neck. And we can see that there's a triangular shape going from the sides of her jaw, and again using straight lines down to the side of her neck, and then it comes up again towards the left side of her hairline. So a big dark shape underneath the chin there. At this stage, I really want to keep everything quite simple because it makes it easier for me to draw. So if there's too much texture in these shapes, I like to use a blending tool, in this case a stump, to gently go over it and rub it so it's a bit lighter and a bit less textured. Now drawing this way, you're really looking at a puzzle of shapes. For instance, again, still looking at triangles, we can see a triangle of light that encompasses the light 
in neck and next to it a big triangle of shadow that reaches all the way into the hair next to the cheekbone. And the reason why I draw this way rather than drawing the eyes or the nose or and so on is that this way trains you to just look at shapes. And this is really useful because ultimately everything we see are just shapes on our retina and our brain fills in the leftovers. So if I keep drawing these triangles and squares, eventually a face will start to form. And it's actually a much easier way to draw compared to actually drawing out all the outlines. Because everyone can draw a triangle or a square. It's actually drawing a face that's quite hard. So let's continue looking at these big triangles. And for instance, one of the face that I can see is a triangle on her cheekbone. There's a big light triangle there. And I can just outline this and then fill in the shadow that sits around that negative shape of the light. Now if you want, you can completely lose the outline, or if you like, you can just use a little line to indicate a separation from cheekbone compared to the shadow in the hair. So I'm just going to continue with the block in here using straight lines and looking for these big triangles of light and dark, really trying to oversimplify everything. And while I'm doing this, if you have any questions at all, feel free to let me know here in the comments if you're watching this live. Now, as we're getting to the eyes, there's a lot of small shapes there. And because the eyes are so important to us, it's very easy to start really working all these small shapes. But this can actually make it a lot harder. So what I tend to do is work from a big to small shapes. First making sure I've got the general eye socket and then drawing the smaller shapes on top. So instead of drawing the big shape, I'm first just completely shading in the whole eye socket. And next what I can do is start working with negative shapes, so the shapes surrounding the eye socket, and erasing what I don't need. So for instance, we can see in between the brows, there's a triangular light shape. So using a brush or an eraser or even your finger, I can start slowly cutting into that dark shape of the eye. Now 
I can also see quite a clear light shape near the white of the eye. So again, I can start cutting this out, just again thinking about triangles and squares here. And finally, I can see a little shape just below the arch of the brow. Now again, this may not seem like much. But these small shapes will slowly start to become eyes and brows before you know it. And will actually look a lot more realistic than outlining the shapes. So already I can see an eye starting to form there, I can start interpreting it. So I'm going to move on to the next eye and treat it exactly the same way. So I'm going to take cues from the other eye here. So looking at the arch of the brow and comparing this to the other eye, try to make sure it looks more or less symmetrical before starting to get into the smaller shapes. So now I've got a general feel for the eye socket and again I can start using the other eye to figure out the light shapes on my right eye. For instance for the bottom lid I can see it's quite bright so I can simply follow the line of the bottom lid in the left eye and bring this out in the other eye. And once I've got this as my outline, I can then fill in the white of the eye by using a brush or maybe a clean stump or a piece of tissue or your finger. You can also use the rubber here, but keep in mind it will take off most of the underlying grey of the paper and it might come across a little bit harsh. So I tend to really work with the mid-tone and the dark here and the highlights are safe for later. And what I really like about this way of working is that it's very tactile. I can push the charcoal around much like I would with oil paint. And so I can make changes without really committing to the drawing yet. And again, while I'm doing this, if you have any questions at all, feel free to let me know in the comments if you're watching this live.
So we can see the eyes slowly starting to come out of the paper. And so I'm going to move on to the last feature, which is the mouth. And for this, what I tend to do is divide that bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin into three equal parts. The bottom part being the bulge of the chin and the top part being the upper lip. And what I really like to do is use the rest of my features to indicate where everything should be. So for instance, I can drop a line using the middle of my eyes and an indicator to find the corners of the mouth. And this just helps ensure that everything still stays in place because it's very easy for features to start moving around in the face. For the bottom lip, what I tend to do is do a bit of squinting at the image and really try to only pick out the dark shapes. And when I squint at the lips, I can really only see a dark shape underneath that bottom lip that then merges into the side of the chin. And squinting or using a mirror can be really helpful here because naturally you'll want to draw using our sense of touch. So we want to draw what we know is there. We know that the lips have an outline or they feel different so we want to draw an outline there. But really when you squint at it or flip the image upside down you really only see shapes and when copying these shapes down the lips already start to form. And this goes for the hair as well. Instead of drawing individual hairs, I'm just going to draw the dark shapes I see, which are near the crown of her head and the sides of the face. And once I've done this, the blocking phase and the measuring phase of the drawing is more or less done. Everything should roughly be in a place where you're happy with it. And you can start finishing, rendering and basically making it look like a finished drawing. Thank you. 
and this is where the compressed charcoal starts coming in. So willow is quite a soft charcoal that's very easy to move around and doesn't go very dark. And that's perfect for the blocking and the measuring phase, because this is where I still want to push these things around. But as I get more and more closer to a finish, I actually want to start putting in darker details that stay and don't easily move around. And this is where compressed charcoal is very useful, because of the glue inside the charcoal dust, it actually does not move around as easily and it goes a bit darker, so it's perfect for details around the shadows. Now when it comes to finishing, there's lots of different ways to do it. And it's very personal in terms of the mark making and the way you want your drawing to look. So instead of focusing on how I finish, I'm going to focus on the underlying principles. And often people think that finishing has to do with putting as much detail in everywhere you need to. Instead, I want you to focus on edges. And what I mean by edges is, how quickly does this dark shape turn into the lights? And how quickly does this light shape turn into the darks? For instance, looking at the nose, we know that the tip of the nose slowly turns round into the shadows. So this is where I put a gradient, maybe using a blending tool. But around the nostrils we can see shapes that are a bit more precise, a little bit less vague and soft, and a bit crisper. And this is where I will use my compressed charcoal to outline the shape, giving it a bit more of a stronger, darker edge that will make the shape jump out just a bit more. And this is called building of the tones, so we're adding darker tones to the areas that you want to emphasize. So what I'm doing here is using my blending tool to gently blur the edges between the light and the dark shapes that I made earlier, making them rounder, losing the sharps and losing the straight lines I made earlier. And then I'm coming in with my compressed charcoal and bringing those shapes back where I feel like stuff has gone a bit too soft. There's a bit of a back and forth here. And that doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong, it just means that you're slowly building up those tones.
So I feel like it's not quite round enough, so in I go again, using my blending tool, just gently blending it, trying to make it feel rounder and rounder by adding that big gradient, occasionally cleaning my blending tool if I feel like it is muddying everything. And then coming back in with my compressed charcoal, I'm adding accents where I feel like the focus should be. And again, this is a very personal thing. You might want to emphasize the nostrils, you might want to emphasize the shadow on the side of the nose. But the main thing is to have as much variety as possible. And what I mean by this is the softer the softs and the harder and crisper the hard edges created with the compressed charcoal, the more variety there is in that shape and therefore the more realistic it starts to look. And slowly it starts coming out of the page and starts to feel a little bit 3D. So when finishing or rendering something, it's not about how much detail is in the shapes and how much information is in the shapes, it's more about the variety of the edges of those shapes that will really make the drawing start to feel alive. So I'm going to do the same thing for the lips, outlining the edges of the shapes, rounding them up, making them a bit more personal, a bit more like her lips rather than generic lips. And then I'm going to go in and soften some of these shapes into the light. And again, while I'm doing this, feel free to ask me any questions you like in the comments if you're watching this live.
And again, as you can see, I'm slowly building up these stones again, drawing it in using the compressed charcoal, then using my blending tool to slowly blend this in. And I'm doing this a few times to build up those tones. And the more I do this, the softer, and more malleable my drawing will start to feel while still having that feeling of that there's a shape there that actually feels like her lips. And what I tend to do is soften the areas that should be rounder and use accents where I feel like it's losing the shape a little bit because I've blended it too much. So what I actually tend to do is over blend and then use my compressed to bring it back. And this actually requires a bit of trust in your drawing skills because it can feel very scary to lose the drawing that you spent a while constructing earlier. And a really good example of this is, for instance, the side of our cheekbone. I can completely lose the side of our cheekbone into the shadow of our hair. And then the instinct often is to put a nice bit of rubber in there to indicate that light that reflects back into the shadows. But instead I would actually either leave it completely lost or try to go in with your compressed charcoal and gently find a few lines that just about indicate what is going on in that side of the skull. And I often find that at the start, this can feel a bit uncomfortable. But because charcoal is so malleable, you really can't go wrong here. If I'm not quite happy with the line I've made, I can just blend this back using my blending tool and then put a new line down again. And actually the act of losing something and then finding it again makes the drawing seem a bit more mysterious, a bit more interesting to look at. And I often tend to compare this to telling a story. If I'm reading or listening to a good story, I want to have hints of what's happening, but I don't want to know the end yet. And the same thing happens with the drawing. You don't really want to have all of the information there. You want the viewer to have to puzzle the pieces together a little bit. And that makes the drawing a bit more interesting to look at. So 
So I'm doing the same around the eyes here. Now going around using my compressed charcoal, rounding off the harsher shapes I made earlier, but really trying to use the less is more approach here. Trying to only put accents where I really feel they need that focus, but trying to actually leave a lot more or less undrawn to make the drawing feel like a little bit more interesting. And again, this is a very personal thing. Some people prefer more tightly rendered or finished drawing, and other people prefer a more loosely styled drawing. What I tend to do is really try to see with how much I can get away with not drawing in. So for instance, you may note that I'm really not putting much information inside of the shadows at all. Instead, I'm only focusing on those outside lines looking at what's softer and what's harder. And this also goes for the light shapes, of course. I can use my blending tool I use a rubber on it first to make it nice and clean to remove some of the charcoal, making a nice big gradation from the light into the shadow. Because of course some light shapes are nice and crisp and others are more of a big gradation, just like those shadow shapes. So I'm just going to do the other eye now. And again, if you have any questions about shapes or edges or anything else, please let me know in the comments if you're watching this live.
So as you can see, I'm really never deviating from my original shape design. I'm not adding a lot of extra information. I'm just refining the information I've already got. And when I'm doing this, I'm always thinking, can I lose it a bit more? And where do I want the focus to be? So generally, I will want the focus to be in the eyes. So this is where I will have most of my details and most of my finish. And I don't really want the viewer, for instance, to look into the shadows and the side of the face. So this is where I put the least of my detail. Now I haven't really worked in the highlights yet and this is because highlights really pull the eye in and so I tend to use them only sparingly, only in the areas that I want the focus to be and try to leave them out everywhere else. So I've really mainly just worked in the darks and the mid-tones. But now I think it's a good time to start adding some of these highlights. And I'm going to try to focus this around the eye area, because again, that's the focus of my drawing. So there's a really beautiful, strong highlight on her fringe, going across, which I can put in using my rubber. And I can use the point of my putty rubber to just find the glint in our eye to really bring out the focus there. And I may just add a few little highlights around the nose and the lips to give them a bit of secondary focus. But I'm constantly trying to make the eyes the most interesting part of the drawing. And as a final touch, I'm going to work with the hair, again keeping that focus in mind and those edges in mind. And only really adding a few little marks to indicate the texture of the hair. Because again, I want that focus to be on the eyes and the face. And if I add too much detail around the hair, that will pull the eye away from the face. And make this a picture about the hair, which I don't really want in this picture. Alright, so we're almost at the end here, so I'm just going to continue making small changes 
to the portrait here. Again, trying to work on those edges and work on that focus of my portrait. In the meantime, if you have any questions, like always, feel free to ask me here in the comments if you're watching this live. And otherwise, I will speak to you at the end of the pose.
All right, so that's the end of the pose. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you feel like you've learned something about edges and how they work in a portrait. If you'd like to show us your work, feel free to use the photograph button here in the chat, or otherwise use the hashtag, hashtag RawUmberLife, if you use Instagram. I hope you enjoyed the session and thank you for taking part. Don't forget to photograph your works, put them on Instagram and hashtag them with hashtag raw umber live. We run two sessions a week, a portrait drawing session every Sunday at 4 p.m. and figure drawing every Wednesday at 8 p.m. The last portrait session of every month is free. Thank you and goodbye.